Are you tired of the secular news? Do you want a Christian view of politics? Do you want to know what is going on in your Christian community? Your wait is over. Welcome to the Intermountain Christian News Hour. Here is your host, Dr. Anthony Harper. Hi, I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with the Intermountain Christian News Hour, a radio pro- program outreach ministry of the Intermountain Christian Newspaper. And uh, my co-host, Alan Jones, couldn't be here today. I uh, miss having him here, and uh, so hopefully he, he will be uh, joining me on Friday. And uh, please check out our website, imcnews.org, to learn more about how to get involved in spreading our, the news about our uh, Christian newspaper, A Voice of Truth, uh, in the Intermountain area at imcnews.org. And if you could sign up as a sponsor and uh, help us out uh, making a difference, sharing good news, uh, we need help with uh, continuing our radio program. We need to raise $3,600 for that, uh, and donations are tax deductible. You can call me and if you'd like to help out at area code 208-703-8688. Also, you can go online and click on the Donate button or the Support Us link and uh, be able to help out that way. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to share a testimony, be on the radio program, talk about some uh, news perspective, a commentary, I uh, sure would love to hear from you once again in Boise. Please call. Uh, Seven days a week, area code 208-703-8688. So today we have Pastor Jonathan Kahn to join me talking about uh, his book, The Harbinger. Pastor Kahn, are you there? I'm here. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, my blessing. You know, um, I've read the book and uh, watched the video. Uh, My wife and I watched the video. And uh, what I liked about The Harbinger book, uh, the you know, best about, and this the, the serious issues are about uh, God's judgment for America. And I want you to share your listeners, uh, share with our listeners about how you see Bible prophecy relating to 9-11 and God's judgment upon America. Well, um, The Harbinger is, uh, it's subtitled, the, the Ancient Mystery that Holds the Secret of America's Future. And it's it's a a mystery it goes back over two and a half thousand years, and mm-hmm. uh, it is it lies behind everything from 9/11 to the collapse of the economy to it, so specifically that it actually uh, it actually gives the words that American leaders say before they say them. It actually gives exact dates um, the, of Amer- American events down to the hours of when they happen, and it it goes back to uh, the last days of ancient Israel. And in Israel's last days, before its judgment came, uh, there were nine harbingers, or nine prophetic signs, nine prophetic warnings that appeared in the land that were a a warning of judgment. And the thing is, the scary thing, or the stunning thing, or however you look at it, the amazing thing, is that those same nine harbingers are now reappearing on American soil. And, And specifically, and with precision, some have appeared in in New York City, some have appeared in Washington D.C. Some have involved American leaders, and some have involved ceremonies, even even involving the highest leaders of the land. So it, it it affects everything. This ancient biblical mystery affects everything from politics to the economy to uh, Wall Street to um, our future. Um, and the ultimate issue is is God sending a warning to America. Uh, is America in danger of judgment? And that is what the Harbinger is revealing, that we are replaying this exact ancient mystery. And we can get into the details, but that's an overview of what we're talking about. Now, um, a website for people to learn more about the Harbinger, what would that be? Uh, that, yeah, that's, well, if, it, if you want to get the, the, full, the, the fullest teachings on it, um, it's only available on one website called theharbingerwebsite.org or theharbingerwebsite.com and they have the full teachings, DVDs, and CDs. If they want to get the book, The Harbinger, you can get that anywhere from Amazon.com to Barnes & Noble to Walmart. I mean, it's everywhere. And the other thing is you mentioned the, the DVD. We didn't produce that. World Night Daily did, but it's very powerful. People actually see The Harbingers on that and it's called the Isaiah 910 Judgment and that is available on Amazon.com. It's the Isaiah 910 Judgment and it's two 
two DVDs and just very very powerful made. It, it, it's uh, one of the best selling um, DVDs of faith in the year, of the year. So it, it's just spreading forth. But yeah, they can get it those ways. I need to have those websites again because I wasn't able to write fast enough. Oh, here. good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, first, for those that? yeah, for those who want, I mean, the full fullest revelations. It's like a seven CD teachings or seven DVDs. It's the Harbinger website dot com or the or the Harbinger website dot org, uh, okay. and for the for the DV, for the documentary the the Isaiah nine ten judgment that's on Amazon dot com or um, a number a number of other places. And the last thing is the book is everywhere from Amazon to Walmart to Barnes and Noble. And and people can read something also on World Net Daily. Well, World Net Daily is the they're the ones who really produced the the DVD and oh, okay. um, the two DVDs. They produced the Isaiah nine ten judgment. Um, so they're I, I mean I'm in it, but they they produced it and. Um, they're the ones who are kind of moving that forward, so it's it's um, it's been very powerful. And they, they are, I mean, and this is distinguishing from our, my our ministry. You know, we're in we're in um, right outside New York City. We're in Northern Jersey, it's the Jerusalem Center in Wayne, New Jersey, and the website is called hopeoftheworld.com or hopeoftheworld.org. But that's our that's the ministry. So if people want other teachings, other stuff, that's hope of hopeoftheworld.org. Okay, and great to know that about. Uh... So thank you for asking. Yeah, there's there's a lot to know, and uh, I sure appreciate uh, the editor of uh, World Net Daily, uh, Mr. Joseph uh, Farah. Yes. And uh, that website is wmd.com. Yes. Yes, and that 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 has a lot of like up to date news things from the perspective of what God is doing. It's a very 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 powerful news site. Uh, a lot of Americans are concerned about where America's headed, and. Yes. Uh, we're facing it. We've heard uh, a uh, economic collapse, mm-hmm. and uh, and many other issues. Uh, you know, there's the, there's a the homosexual agenda in America here locally in Boise, the capital sure. of Idaho. We had a, a special homosexual ordinance that passed here that would affect Christian business owners. And, mm. um, yeah, but this yeah. happened nationwide. So how do you see um, yeah. the, the harbingers? Um, besides the economic issue, you, uh, are there harbingers uh, warnings about in these other moral areas? Oh yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Great things. question. Yeah, it, it goes together because it, it, see the thing, the ultimate, the ultimate revelation is that what happened in the last days of Israel is happening now in America, and and the you know the moral you know spiritual d- departure from God that happened in ancient Israel is happening in America, and it's. It's increasing in its rapidity, and in the same, as it gets more intense and more rapid, these signs start appearing. And that's what happened in ancient Israel. And the the you know Israel was a nation that knew God, that I mean that had been formed for His purposes, and yet fell away from Him and turned away from Him. And they started calling good evil and evil good. They started celebrating immorality and they started persecuting righteousness. And they, they, you know, they began to promote sexual immorality. They drove God out of their government, out of their public life. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they went after other gods. They went after materialism. And they, they ultimately lifted up their children as sacrifices to the gods. And mm-hmm. finally, finally, God, you know, he sent prophets. He called them. Finally, as they hardened their hearts, he allowed something to happen. And the first sign of Judgment, and this is a pattern that come that comes again and again in the Bible. That is, years before the nation's judgment or destruction, a warning comes, a wake-up call comes, and it comes in the form of a strike on the land. The nation's head of protection is removed, and it's to wake them up. But it happens in 732 BC with Israel, and yet it is an attack by the Assyrians. But the, and it, it, it shakes them up. But instead of repenting, instead of uh, being humbled and returning to God. They respond with defiance, and and I, the prophet Isaiah records their response. They make a vow, and the vow is is this. It's in Isaiah nine uh, verse ten. It says, "The bricks have fallen." In this, they're talking about the attack, but mm-hmm. we will rebuild with hewn stone. The sycamores have been cut down in the attack, but we will 
plant cedars in their place. And what they're saying is, God, you're not going to humble us. We're not. Tur- we're not coming back. We're going to. We're going to keep on in our, our our course away from you. And as we do it, we're going to do it even more strongly than ever. We're going to rise up more strongly and defy you. And this is ominous because it's going to lead to the harbingers appearing, and 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 it's going to lead to their destruction. And so this verse becomes crucial. This is like the kind of the decoder verse of the harbingers. And what does it have to do with America? Well, America is also a nation that has been founded, was founded on God's word, was founded for His purposes, and yet America has also been turning away from God rapidly. Um, in the same way, we've also been driving God out of our lives, out of our government, out of our public square. We have, we are calling good evil and evil good. We are celebrating immorality. We are beginning to persecute the righteous. You just alluded to that. And we also are, have lifted up our children. Um, and the same when people say, well, how can you compare that? They, you know, well, Israel, they lifted up thousands of their children. America, we have lifted up over 50 million of our children, our unborn. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the first sign is this opening act of judgment or warning is this strike on the land, the removal of the nation's hedge of protection. Well, it happens. On September 11, 2001, the hedge of America's protection is lifted. An enemy is allowed to make a strike to the land. As with ancient Israel, it's, it was limited, it was contained, and it was temporary, it was over. Then came this period where the nation hung in the balance to either come back to God or head to judgment. And the, the thing is, America did not return to God. You know, I mean, right after 9-11, there were calls, you know, people were flocking to churches, but only for a few weeks. Right. There was no real repentance. I mean, there was, you know, and without repentance, there is no revival. And so what's happened is, if anything, we have grown much farther from God since 9-11. And that's an ominous thing, and, and even more ominous is that we have been reenacting, replaying, the, exactly what Israel did when it headed to its destruction. And in the same way, that's when the nine harbingers appear. There are nine recorded in the book, nine harbingers. And, you know, I'll just, I'll just touch on some, because there's so much. I'll just touch on some. I'll give a little taste of it. Um, the, 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 it goes with a vow. It says, the bricks are falling, we will rebuild with hewn stone. Well, that word, that word hewn stone in Hebrew is the word gazit, a gazit stone. And a gazit stone was a, is a, is literally a carved, chiseled rock, a mountain rock. There's these massive rectangular blocks of stone chiseled down the mountains. And what they did is they went to the mountains, they chiseled the stone out, they brought it back to the ground of the destruction where the bricks have fallen. They lay it down, it becomes their symbol of defiance, we're going to rebuild, we're going to come back stronger than ever, and it's actually a stone of judgment. They, they think it's a good thing, it's actually going to be the beginning of their judgment. Well, what does that do with America? After 9-11, the people of New York, they go up to the mountains of New York, and they quarry out a stone, and it's a, it's a massive 20-ton rectangular block of stone, and they, it is a biblical gazit stone. They bring it back, according to the mystery, it's got to go back to the ground of destruction. They bring it back to New York. They bring it to ground zero. They lower it on the pavement there. They have a ceremony around the stone. They have the leaders of New York and New Jersey gathering around the stone and making, pronouncing vows of defiance over the stone, saying we're going to come back stronger than ever. We're going to defy this, all this. Mm-hmm. And they have no idea what they're doing. And they have no idea they're reenacting this biblical act of judgment, drama of judgment without knowing it. And it goes right down the line, because in the vow it says, it says, the, it says the sycamores have been cut down. Well, this is the sign of the sycamore. In the, in the book, it's the sixth harbinger. This is a sign of national judgment. The striking down of the trees is always a sign of the uprooting of the nation. It's a warning. So that's what happened in the attack with Israel. They, the trees, the sycamores were uprooted. Well, what does this have to do with America, the sign of the sycamore? Well, this is what happens. In the last moments of 9-11, as the last tower is coming down, it sends forth a shockwave, and it sends forth a beam into the air, and it strikes an object that just happens to be there. That object happens to be a tree, and that tree just happens to be the sycamore. The sycamores are fallen, the sign of biblical national judgment. The sycamore is struck down right there at the corner of Ground Zero. The people in New York make it into a symbol. They put it on display. They, they call it the Sycamore Ground Zero. They have no idea, again, what they're doing. And it's, it, goes, it goes on in the vow. It says, Israel said, the Sycamores have fallen, but we will plant cedars in their place. The seventh harbinger is the, is the Erez, or the sign of the Erez tree. And what that is, is when they, they, there's another act of defiance. They're saying, God, you're not going to humble us. If the, the tree comes down, we're going to plant another tree right in its place. 
we're going to show you that we're not going to be humble. We're coming back stronger. And they don't plant a sycamore. They plant a different kind of tree. The, the English reads cedar, but it, the Hebrew is, is erez, and that can mean a cedar. can also mean a spruce. means mm-hmm. a pine, conifer, uh, specific kind of uh, conifer tree. Well, what does this have to do with America? Two years after 9-11, a tree appears in the sky on the corner of ground zero. It's being lowered by crane to, get in, to go into an exact spot of earth, and what is that spot? That spot of earth is the exact spot where the sycamore had stood. This is a biblical act. In Hebrew, it's called halaf. It's a biblical act of replacing one tree with the other. They put the tree down, and they have a ceremony around the tree, just like around the stone. Mm-hmm. And they, 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 they declare defiance and this confidence and all this. And what kind of tree was it? It wasn't a sycamore. They planted a biblical erez tree, the same tree of judgment of Isaiah 9.10. And it gets even more, like, I mean, more precise and, and really stunning. Because the, the eighth harbinger is the vow itself. That actually, the leaders of the nation would have made this vow. Because only the leaders could speak for the nation. Only the leaders could, could determine where the, the course of the nation. So a leader had to say this vow. This vow of Isaiah 9, 10, the bricks are fallen, the whole thing. And would have said it in the capital city. Well, what does it have to do with America? Could this, could this harbinger appear? Because, what American leader in their right mind is going to pronounce judgment on America? I mean, or what American leader running for office is going to do this? Well, the, the, the stunning thing is that three years after 9-11, on the exact anniversary of 9-11, an American leader gets up in the capital city, and he speaks to a congressional caucus, and he's speaking about 9-11, and, and the, he's John Edwards running for vice president, senator, and he, out of his mouth, as he opens his mouth, he actually utters the ancient vow of judgment. And he speaks, he says, the bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with you in stone. The sycamore has been cut down. We will plant seed. He does the entire vow. Out of 30,000 verses, he, out of his mouth mm-hmm. comes the vow of judgment. And he doesn't know what he's saying. Just like with all the harbingers that appear, he has no idea what he's doing. And yet he's pronouncing judgment on the nation, identifying America as the nation in defiance of God, and he's identifying 9-11 as the first strike of judgment. And it gets even more intense. The, the ninth harbinger, the last harbinger, mm-hmm. it happens the day after 9-11. Could you share and, that, Pastor Khan? We're gonna, just going to take a brief break sure, here. Sure. We want to keep people in the seats about the, the ninth harbinger to talk about that. But, sure. Uh, you know, I want to make a comment. We have less than a minute till we go to this break time. About two minutes, Pastor Con, and we'll be right back. But the issue is, you know, I, we think about uh, pride. Um, uh, I saw uh, a lot of bumper stickers around our area that uh, were about pride in the U.S. Right. And uh, this arrogance. And uh, yeah, you know, we we in- encourage people to to study the Word of God more because uh, the Bible does have the answers. There's great prophecies and. Yeah. And Pastor Khan, why don't we remind people to check out the website, uh, yeah. a couple of websites, the harbingerwebsite.com or .org, and then also hopeoftheworld.com or .org, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And, yeah, they uh, can, they can, yeah, and we they will can get the book here. anywhere. I'm okay, sorry. we'll be back in just about two minutes, Pastor Khan. Okay. Thank you for holding on, and uh, Thanks, check Sam. out those websites, and imcnews.org will be right back. read news every day. News that's informative, but rarely encouraging. The Intermountain Christian Newspaper aims to change that. They present the news you need to know, from what's going on in your community to your world, with encouraging words, motivation, and the resources you need to make positive changes in your life. What is your local government doing that you need to know about? What's happening in your community you need to be a part of? Whether it's a story from your neighborhood, a national story, or an encouraging word, you'll find biblical issues of everyday life in the Intermountain Christian Newspaper. Intermountain Christian News is produced and supported by the work and donations of individuals and churches. You'll find it at churches, Christian bookstores, and online at imcnews.org. To find out more about supporting this local resource, go online at imcnews.org or call Intermountain Christian News in Boise, Idaho at 208-703-8688. The Intermountain Christian News, a voice sharing the truth on matters dear to people's hearts. Living Waters Ranch, located in Chalice, Idaho, serves the body of Christ, offering a unique haven apart from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. 
Small groups of church personnel can enjoy a planning retreat, and large groups will find plenty of activities for all ages. For more information about Living Waters Ranch, check out their website at www.livingwatersranch.org or call their office at 208-879-2729. That's 208-879-2729. I'm back again here. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper of the Intermountain Christian News Hour with my guest, Pastor Jonathan Kahn, and and it's about his book, The Harbinger. And thank you, Pastor Kahn, for joining me. Oh, thank you, Anthony, for having me. You know, I think about, you know, the judgment for America, and I want for our listeners that don't know Christ to to know Christ before it's too late. And I just want to remind uh, you out there that are listening, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, it's crucial because if you die today, you know for sure if you'd be in heaven or not. We want you to know uh, God, not to be separated from Him forever. So uh, if you haven't repented of your sins, and we've all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, please repent today. Please obey Christ and, and follow Him with your whole heart to do what He's uh, asked you to do. And uh, your life will be a lot different. You'll have a new life. You'll be born again when you uh, repent and you trust in Him to save you from your sins. Uh, call 888 Need Him 24 7 or call us and love to pray with you. But you can reach out to God right now and, and just be humble yourself and ask Him to forgive you. Because there are a lot of judgments that come upon America, as Pastor Con and I are talking about. The scripture is very clear of what's going, going to be happening. And the book of Revelation is specifically uh, related to this in times. And uh, Pastor Khan, um, you know, the ninth harbinger you were talking about. Yes. Yeah. And let me, let me just say, you know, you, you said something before the break, and you said um, you, you noticed how much it was said about pride and arrogance. Right. And I don't know if you know, but, but the opening of the prophecy of, of Isaiah 9.10 says, the people say this in pride and arrogance, the very thing you said. And that's exactly the, that's exactly what the wrong spirit. That's exactly what Israel did. That's what America did. It wasn't the answer. And because, you know, I'm, I'm t- it's, the answer isn't political, military, economic, and no matter what we do, it doesn't work if, if we don't get back to God. The answer has to do with God. And, and the ninth harbinger we just spoke of, what happened the day after 9-11, and it, the, people don't know that the American government gathered on Capitol Hill the next day to give, to issue the nation's response to 9-11. So this is crucial and prophetically important. Mm-hmm. One man is chosen to do it, and that man is the Senate Majority Leader. He represents the Senate. The Senate represents the, the nation. He is Tom Daschle. He gets to the, to the podium, and he gives America's, he presents America's response to 9-11. And at the end of his speech... He says this, out of his mouth, he says, There is a passage from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. He has no idea what he's about to say. Mm -hmm. And out of his mouth, from the floor of, of Congress to every senator, every congressperson, he says, The bricks have fallen. But we will rebuild with, with dress stone. Then he speaks of the tree being struck down. And then he speaks of the replacing the tree. And he says this without, and he doesn't, you know, it's, it's, it's the, it's, this is in the official record of, of the American Congress. I mean, our, that our official response, our response to 9-11 in the rec- annals of Congress is the same exact words of Israel's response to the attack that led to their judgment. Mm-hmm. And he says it, it's like prophetic. You know, he says it, and as he says it, he, he talks about the tree being struck down, and he doesn't realize there is an actual tree that's just, that's just been struck down, that's just being discovered that day. He speaks of the stone of judgment that's going to go up, the Gazit stone. He doesn't realize it's going to happen. It's actually going to happen three years later. He speaks of the replacing of the one tree with the other. It's going to happen two years later. It's prophetic. And at the end of his speech, he says, this is what we will do. And what he's referring to is I, specifically is Isaiah 9 10. And what he's saying, he doesn't realize he's saying, he's saying America is going to fulfill Isaiah 9 10. We're going to follow the course of ancient Israel, which led to their destruction. And it's prophetic because, you know, again, we spoke that after 9 11, we thought, you know, a lot of believers thought, oh, it's going to be revival because people are going to church. But there wasn't without repentance. And if we were there on Capitol Hill, we would have seen it. It was even like, it was even spoken prophetically on that day without realizing what he was doing. 
and mm-hmm. it would lead to it's going to lead to the next thing see the harbingers are not the end of the story they're the beginning it's going to lead to something more because because what the mystery of the harbinger is still it's happening in fact things are coming true since the book came out you know and pastor it, Khan, i hate to interrupt yeah forgive sure. me about that um we have less than a minute well about a minute here for the program but well, for more details, of, and, and Pastor Khan, I hope that you can join me again on a radio program to, to do some follow-up, and that is for, for a website for our listeners to learn more about The Harbinger. A couple websites is theharbingerwebsite.com or .org, hopeoftheworld.com or .org. And, uh, and if, also, they want to get, if they want to get the book, they can get it at Amazon, Walmart, CBD, Barnes & Noble, everywhere. The Harbinger is everywhere. And the, and the um, DVD, the Isaiah 910 Judgment documentary, they'll see the Harbingers themselves, is out on Amazon.com. It's the Isaiah 910 Judgment. Well, Pastor Khan, I do appreciate you joining me. And, and I appreciate your prayers as I uh, hope to go to travel with the president. Yes, and deal with I a lot it. of arrogant leaders in Washington, D.C. And, and news reporters on these trips. Yes. So thanks to your prayers that God will uh, open That's the door tremendous. for me to be a witness. Yes, and God has put you in this place. So I will look forward to calling you later and okay. hopefully have you join me again. Yes, there's a lot there. And keep me in prayer for the inaugural thing. We God has both put us in a place to do something. So well, I've got to talk to you about that. I'll call you back shortly and I want to okay. get some more information about that. All right, Anthony. Thank Mr. you. Pastor Khan. God Thank bless you. you. God bless you. It's a wonderful day. I appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah.